Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. Come along with me today. We got kicked off with our annual hog killing. That's just what we call it. I know some people are offended by that, but that's just what we call it uh, yesterday. So we'll be working on that between now and Christmas. We got several to do, neighbors helping neighbors. Anyways, um, I've got some things to fix today. Right now I'm working on my lard this morning. I'm gonna show you what I got out in the smoker. I got a few other going zones today. So y'all just come on with me. I'm gonna show y'all what I got out here in the smoker. This is one of those master built, uh, it's a small smoker. We found it on a Black Friday deal, I don't know, two or three years ago. But this is what I make all my bacon in. And this year, um, I am barbecuing a shoulder. We always do that. I always make barbecue out of a shoulder. A lot of people call it Boston butt, but it's a shoulder. And I usually do it in my oven or my roasting pan. Well, this year, I don't know why I've never thought to do it before, but I'm like, why don't I do it in the smoker? So that's what I'm doing right now. So let me show y'all here. I've got my meter thermometer in there. If you've never heard of a meter, that thing's pretty neat. It connects to my phone to keep me up to date on my meat temperature and when it's gonna be done. Some downfalls I found to this smoker uh, number one, it's so small. When you open the door like that, the temperature just plummets. Um, so that's one thing I found. And it's a little hard to regulate the temperature. When you're doing bacon, you want to do it as slow as possible, which this ain't bacon, but it's almost don't go low enough for me to do my bacon, but it works. It works. Um, I have to watch my bacon that I put on the bottom rack because it'll cook it. And I, that's not the point when I'm making bacon. And I'm not exactly a fan of the burner on the bottom and where the grease can drop down on the fire. Um, had an issue with that a couple years ago. It was kind of scary, but um, I figured out as long as it's kind of sitting downhill a little bit so the grease can run out the back, it's okay. Um, had to learn that the hard way. But I do like it. I mean, it serves its purpose. I hope to have maybe a better smoker eventually in life. But this one, like I said, it was cheap. I needed a smoker, I wanted a smoker, and this one serves the purpose for that. So what I'll do with this shoulder is after it gets done cooking, I will let it cool completely. Like I'll put it in the refrigerator and tomorrow I will cut it up, chop it up and put vacuum seal it and freeze it. The reason I do that is because all those juices that are inside this shoulder will like, you, well, you know, they get cold and they stay in there. And I found out it makes much better barbecue if I do it that way, um, because I've still got some fat in my barbecue and some flavor. Whereas if I chop it up and do it while it's hot, um, I lose a lot of that because it all runs out. <laughs> so anyways, that's what I got going on right now. And I'm letting it hang out around 300. The next thing I'm doing is vacuum sealing a really delicious cut of meat. This right here is the backbone. Now, 
If you're taking your hogs to the butcher, I'm not sure if they save this piece or you have to ask for it. Never taken a hog uh, to the slaughterhouse, so I don't know. But these are, honestly, this is one of my favorites. Andy, not so much, like they're okay, but to him, but I love them. I think it is very, very delicious. Now, if you get pork chops made, from your pig or you make pork chops you won't have this cut here because the bone that's in your pork chop is the backbone but if you just get the tenderloins um or the boneless pork chops i think some people call them then you will have this right here so be sure you're not throwing this out at least until you try it okay and you've got some pieces when you get closer to the neck that have these look at all that meat that's on that right there and I'll tell you, my favorite way of cooking it is two ways. I like to smoke them. They're really good in the smoker, but I also just like to boil them uh, with a bunch of seasoning and stuff in the water. Man, killer. I think it is delicious. So I gotta get these vacuum sealed and in the freezer. This right here is an Excalibur vacuum sealer. We used to have a food saver and it finally died. I mean, we used it for years and it finally died. We got this for Christmas a couple years ago. I really like this one too because I can adjust how close my seal is to the end of the bag. Whereas the food saver, you had to stick the bag in so far for it to detect it. And um, I don't know, it didn't half work right there at the end. So these are pre-cut bags. I do have rolls of bags too. These are a little more expensive, but a major time saver. That's all my backbone out of that pig. That right there was is five, I made five vacuum sealed bags. So technically that could be five meals uh, that we've made right there on a piece that I feel like a lot of people disregard. Um, but don't knock it till you try it. Checking on our lard here. Right now I've got it on the lowest on the eye that it can go. Another quick look at our lard around an hour later. Still cooking down. Once this gets done, these cracklings will be dark brown. So my lard is pretty much done. A lot of people wait for the bubbles to stop. I don't generally do that. I like to have the clearer lard. Y'all see it looks like almost like water. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But I'm looking for these to start getting brown and crispy. It may be hard to tell in the video and see there's a piece there that's not completely cooked, but a lot of these are brown and crispy. So that's our cracklings there. For any of y'all like to partake in crackling cornbread, it is delicious. The key to good clean lard that's gonna last you a while is filtering it very well. I just use a paper towel with a little filter like this. It's a little bit of a slow process, but that's fine with me. Like I said, I've used lard that's two years old. And anybody that's had any dealings with lard knows that if it's not done right, it gets super porky. Well, doing it this way, you're not gonna experience that. Now, when it start, if it starts getting like a brown color to it, cause I have done that. I mean, you live and you learn. I was in a hurry one day cranked the heat up. I said, I'm gonna get this done. And yeah, it got real porky real quick and it wasn't very good, so. And lard is shelf stable. Do not worry about putting it in a freezer or even the refrigerator. Once it is cooked like this and put into a container, an airtight container, it is shelf stable. Now you will see me put a lid on this. And the lid will more than likely seal itself, but even if it doesn't, it's okay. Like, I'm not canning this, I guess you would say.
So that ended up making about seven quarts of lard. So that's awesome. This is what you want to see. You don't want it to be brown. You want it to be this beautiful. Look how you can see straight through that there. Golden color. This right here, once it cools, is going to be the prettiest white lard you've ever seen in your life. And y'all, in my kitchen, I literally use lard for everything. I do not buy vegetable oils. The only kind of oil I buy is olive oil. I use butter and lard for most things. Uh, it makes excellent, even making a cake, like I melt this down, this is my oil, instead of using vegetable oil, which most recipes call for. Uh, fry things in it, I mean, anything you would use oil for, that's what I use this for. So I will make some out of every pig we do. Uh, that's what I did last year, and I've only got about three jars left. So, you know, this is just a, just the beginning. All right, <laughs> we're done. Well guys, this video was supposed to be more of like a, just been spending the day with me, but I figured y'all might get me if I don't show you the finished product of everything. And actually I gotta chop this barbecue before I get done. So I'll show y'all that too. But here's my lard after it's cooled. You can see there's no brown tint. It is a beautiful white color. And looks like all my lids, sealed uh like i said don't have to can it but if they seal they seal so i gotta get to chopping this barbecue here i let it get cold in the refrigerator overnight and um now i'm gonna slice it and chop it all right when i'm doing barbecue i like to just slice it slice chunks off and put it in my food processor to make chopped barbecue that's solely preference. Some people like it pulled, some people like it chopped. Me and Andy just tend to like it better chopped. I've did it both ways. So let's get started. I got my bone pretty clean, as you can see there. So I've got three pretty good sized containers full of chopped barbecue that I'm gonna vacuum seal and get in the freezer. So I'm gonna show y'all what this looks like. It took me a couple of tries to remember because of course I only make this once a year, but the puree function on my food processor worked better than the chop option. So that's what I ended up doing after the first couple tries. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all my food processor, I use it. That's probably my main tool in the kitchen. My food processor, as far as going to my canning and my food preserving and stuff, I feel like it is a time saver, big time time saver for not just chopping barbecue like this. I use it for my chow chow, I use it for my slaw, I use it, I'm trying to think. I don't know, oh, I use it to make butter. Like there's so many, so many uses for it. Um, I had one that only lasted about a year. I don't even remember what brand it was. And then I was reading some reviews and I got a Ninja food processor and it's lasted me, gosh, three years, maybe longer, something like that. And it's been real good so far. So if it kicks the bucket, it's been a good one. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this stuff vacuum sealed. I try to only put enough in here that me and Andy are gonna eat at one time. So I don't have too many leftovers. Sometimes it's easier said than done. So guys, I ended up having nine packs of barbecue. That's nine meals that I'm putting in the freezer. I saved out one for us to have for supper tomorrow night. Gotta try it out, right? And see, make sure it's <laughs> make sure it's good. I've never done one in the smoker, so I'm gonna try it out. I'll do one more shoulder this hog season. Cause like I said, barbecue's a easy meal. So anyways, guys, I hope this video didn't get too long for you. If you stuck around here to the end, I sure do appreciate it. And I appreciate all y'all's continued support and look forward to seeing y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good one.